Oh! Thank you, Lucien. Hi there. Okay, I know this is called JS World Conference, but don't be angry. I'm not here to talk about JavaScript. As a matter of fact, if this thing gets out there, you might have to go and remove some JavaScript. Let me know in the chat if you recognize yourself in the following questions. Have you ever developed reusable components or a design system? If so, how did you ensure that the components were able to have the most optimal layout across different viewport sizes? Through media queries or by providing configuration options? If my former questions are not ringing any bells, no worries. For the next 20 minutes, I'll share with you how in the near future you can develop robust, reusable, responsive component styles with something that I personally have been waiting for since I started developing responsive websites and applications. Container queries, the next step towards a truly modular CSS. My name is Martin, I am a developer advocate and frontender at IO Campus Eindhoven in the Netherlands. We at IO are a digital first, full service company made out of insatiable curious talents that all seek to advance digitally together. I've been in front end development for over a decade now, and at IO I have been part of projects that create design systems and component libraries. On a more personal basis, I even maintain my own custom version of Bootstrap with its own naming conventions a few years ago. With having seen the evolution of front-end over the last couple of years, I believe container queries are one of the most exciting new features coming to CSS. Something that will enable you to optimize responsive styling for your components. Let me give you an example. Let's say we're part of a project and our goal is to build this dashboard page. If we take out of account the header and the sidebar for a second and look at the page's main content, we see a handful of widgets. A weather widget, a pie chart showing our favorite bars, a bar graph showing our favorite pies and a user list widget. The following user stories have to be implemented in this page. Firstly, as a user, I should be able to customize my dashboard by resizing widgets. Secondly, as a user, I want to see more information in larger widgets and less in smaller widgets. They should contain more or less information depending on their available internal space. For instance, if we choose to prioritize the weather widget next to only showing today's weather, we could also show additional information like the expected precipitation or the expected temperature for upcoming days. Also, let's look at some other possible factors that could come into play. Additional customization options like a collapsible sidebar, for instance. What if we want to reuse these widgets or make them available to other teams or projects where we can't author the final result these widgets will be part of? How would we translate these requirements with possible side effects to code. First thing we might take into consideration is using media queries. However, media queries give us the ability to style responsively according to the viewport and don't offer enough flexibility to create modular styling. What could be a possible solution then? We could create custom classes or attributes per size. A component large, component small, setting an attribute on a custom element and targeting that attribute with a selector in your CSS. With this solution, however, the final application is responsible for declaring the correct styling of the widget. We have to create extra styling in the dashboard application and it's still not possible to automatically provide the most optimal layout to the end user. The end user has to implement their own logic to handle this. Or we could use the Resize Observer API, a browser API that through JavaScript can take elements size into account and act accordingly. But with this solution, we have to wait until the JavaScript is evaluated. 
without proper measures like some form of loading screen and making sure the solution is loaded before every other piece of JavaScript is ready, it can cause a splash of unstyled content. A CSS solution, however, that is, if we use the recommendation of loading critical styles upfront and avoiding render blocking JavaScript on page load, is evaluated before JavaScript. Therefore, we'll receive the correct layout on first paint. And luckily for us, something is cooking. Container queries, element queries, the possibility of querying each element its own dimensions is something we've been looking for since modular front-end architecture meant responsive web design and has been on the discussion radar for almost a decade now. Thanks to recent improvements to browser rendering engines and the advent of CSS containment specification, container queries, which can lead to heavy layout calculations, can finally be implemented in a performant way without sacrificing anything of the user experience. With container queries, the component itself owns all of its responsive styles. It's the optimal solution for responsive component-based architectures, like design systems and component libraries. It splits up responsibilities for styling our layout. For example, the larger parts of your web page, things where a media query makes more sense, will be responsible for the large layout, like grids, and the smaller parts, like individual components, will have their own responsibility for their own layout based on the available space they will have in the larger layout. In this example, created by the great Una Kravitz, we see a page of an e-commerce platform where we can order several kinds of plans to spruce up our home offices. Each product component is implemented using the same CSS class. Using container queries, each product component will adapt to its most optimal layout according to space available. Container queries are part of the CSS containment module level 3 and the specification is currently a working draft, which means that the CSS working group is actively working on the feature. A basis has already been set and details are being ironed out as we speak. CSS containment allows us to improve rendering performance by isolation of a DOM subtree or in other words indicating that an element and its contents rendering should be handled independently of the rest of the document tree. That isolation is what enables us to query elements using container queries. CSS containment consists of four types, size, layout, style and paint. Containment can be set with a single type or multiple types at the same time. In the first proposed syntax for container queries, we had to set containment on size, layout and style. Currently, the container query specification settles at a more distinct property like container, which is a shorthand for container type and container name. The container name property enables us to implement multi-level container queries. With container names, you can target specific containers to query. With the container type, you can establish an element as a query container. Values can be, firstly, the size container feature, like the value size for both horizontal and vertical axes, inline size or block size, the logical properties for width and height for respectively only the horizontal or vertical axes, aspect ratio and orientation. Secondly, style container features for querying computed values. And thirdly, state container features for querying miscellaneous container states. The actual container query is declared using the at container rule, which has a similar syntax to the at media rule or media query. In this example, the query will match if the inline size, the logical property of width, is larger than 400 pixels. Like media queries, we can use multiple conditions. Here, the query will match if the inline size exceeds 400 pixels and block size exceeds 200 pixels. An additional feature that container queries have compared to media queries are container names. This way, we can filter queries to a specific ancestor. Here, the product styles can change depending on the inline size of our product list elements on the one hand, and on both inline size and block size of the element with class page on the other hand. 
An important note with using container queries is that containers cannot query themselves. Containment always has to be set on an ancestor in order for container queries to match. Let's go back to our widgets. With the knowledge of container queries in our possession, we can refactor the use of custom classes, attributes or resize observer to container queries. Keep in mind, we do have to add an extra wrapper if we want to sell the base of the widget as container queries can only query ancestors. As the dimensional parts of the specification are as good as fleshed out, the following features are currently still open for further development. With style container features, we can query the container's computed values. For example, if the background color of the container is red, we can act and style appropriately. State container features will allow us to query certain states of a container. One of the most obvious examples is querying if a container with the property position sticky is in its sticky state. Do keep in mind that the syntax shown here is a proposal and is likely bound to change. Similar to viewport relative units, we have container relative units, which allow you to use dimensions of a container as a unit. Like where 1 VW equals 1% of the viewport width, we could have 1 CQW that would equal 1% of the container's width. Look at all the power container queries will give us. Although the specification is still in active development, which means the syntax is still subject to possible change, you can experiment with container queries today. Chrome Canary has experimental support for container queries behind the enable-container-queries flag and there is a JavaScript polyfill available to enable container query functionality in other browsers. However, knowing the disadvantages of using JavaScript as a solution for this particular problem, like the flash of unstyled content, I personally would not recommend using this in production just yet. As always, the community is happy to accept your contribution. You can check out or even be a part of the Container Queries conversation on the CSS Working Group Issues Project on GitHub, or share your examples and experiments by opening a PR in Stu Robson's awesome Container Queries repository. Links will be in the chat. Having said that, I'd like to share with you my experiments. A good use case for container queries, I believe, is a shopping cart component, where we have declared all of our shopping cart business logic in one single place, like the calculated subtotal of the quantity and price of a product and the calculation of a grand total. With container queries, we can then reuse that single component, for example, on the actual shopping cart page or in the header, as a mini cart. Depending on the size given to the component, it will adapt its styling. Extra benefit, the larger desktop version of this component is, thanks to the implementation of container queries, also immediately optimized for mobile devices. We can even go as far as using container queries in our SVGs and by extension SVG sprites. SVG supports CSS and will also support container queries. By declaring responsive styles in an SVG or SVG sprite, we can create truly responsive SVGs and SVG sprites. In this experiment, we see SVG images of a Stegosaurus and a Diplocitus. Both are part of the same SVG sprite, which is declared at the top of the document and where the separate SVG images are reused and placed in the main part of the document. If I enlarge the image of the Stegosaurus, we see the outline disappear, and the same goes for the image of the Diplocitus, only at a larger size. Container queries tailored to each image, which are declared once in the SVG sprite above, make this possible. Go check out the code paint later on for more information. Let's bring this to a close, shall we? What did we learn today? With container queries, we can encapsulate adaptive styling in elements. It's the optimal solution for responsive component-based architectures like design systems and component libraries. 
The container queries umbrella is not limited to querying dimensions, querying computed styles, certain element states, new container relative units and several more features will be part of the specification. Current state is that the specification is a working draft and under active development. It's available for experimentation in Chrome Canary behind a feature flag or with the container query polyfill. With that, I would not recommend using it in production just yet. I do hope I've managed to get you all psyched for the future of CSS. Go play with container queries and do share your experiments with me. You can find me on Twitter at MRTNVH. I would love to see your examples and I will personally share each and every one of them. Now, before I wrap off, I believe I should give credit where credit is due. A big thank you to everyone who is currently championing container queries at the CSS Working Group, writing blog posts or sharing experiments. I want to give a big shout out to Miriam, Suzanne and Yuna Kravitz, whose blog posts, videos, examples have inspired me to talk in this camera for 20 minutes straight and spread that container query word. I've put all the links of my resources at the back of the slide deck so you can check them out at your own pace. Link will be in the chat shortly. Everything about me is on my website, mrtnvh.com. And if you like what you heard and you want to work on design systems or component libraries with container queries as soon as they hit all major browsers, our campus's digital doors are open 24-7 on iodigital.com. Be sure to check that one out. Thank you to JS World for giving me this opportunity and most importantly of all, thank you for watching. Have a lovely conference. Peace.